Hi, welcome to another video, and in this one we're going to be expanding on the generic Amazon USB handbrake that I reviewed recently. Now, one of the things I mentioned in that video was that you didn't have any drivers or any other tools to be able to set anything on the handbrake globally, so at a PC level, um, and you had to go in and set everything up at um, a title level. However, <clears throat> over on GT Planet, um, a member by the name of An Angry Ginger 81 suggested that I give something a try and see if it worked. And uh, big thanks to Angry Ginger 81, who doesn't seem that angry at all, rather quite helpful, suggested using the uh, Husingveld um, DI view tool that uh, allows you to set dead zones and calibrations for their range of pedals. So that's exactly what I thought I would give a go with. So what you do first of all is you obviously have to go to the Husingveld um, website and download DI view and I'll put a link to this down at the bottom. When you go in there, there is a download the iView option, uh, which is a zip, and you quite literally just click on that, download the zip file, and extract it to wherever you want to use it. So I've popped it on my desktop here. You go into it, it opens up, and you'll be able to see your wheel and everything there. You can see me playing around with the pedals and everything, but you should see in there an Arduino Leonardo controller. Now, mine comes through as Rudder RZ, and you can see this is me pulling the full range of it. So what you can then do within here if you wish to start tuning it is right-click on it. Now, you can set the dead zone as saturation, but the calibration is the one that's most useful. And you can see the default values in here uh, for a min, maximum, and center value. Um, and these default to 0, 1, 2, 8, and 2, 5, 5. So you can set these down. Let's say you wanted just under half of that. You could go for 60 to 120 if you want to change them. You can hit restore defaults and that will take you back to where you were. But I'm just going to enter in here 60 and 120. Click on OK and bingo. That is now the range on it. You, with a 255 maximum value set at 120, just under half the total length of the throw will now be 100%. So I've effectively halved the range of throw on this. So what we're going to do now is take a look at how you can then set that up in a range of different titles and what options you've got because they do vary from title to title. So first thing we're going to take a look at is WRC9. Now, with WRC9, um, you go into key bindings, you select this under your wheel. So, as you can see here, I've got two wheel options for some unknown reason. Um, WRC9 isn't the most user-friendly, but select handbrake, press assign key, pull back on the handbrake, and that's now assigned. You do then have the opportunity to play around the sensitivity and the dead zone for it if you want to. And you can also change the saturation in here. Now, this is the value that I was playing around with uh, in the past, but I can leave that now set at 100 because I've done that on a global level. Um, rescale doesn't appear to actually do anything. It doesn't change the scaling on it in any way, shape or form. So I just left that on. And obviously invert you don't want to use. And you can see the test control gauge was popping away like mad there as I played around on that. So basically that's how you'd set things up on WRC9. Let's now move over to Dirt Rally 2.0 and have a look at how we set things up on Dirt Rally 2.0. So when you go into here it will actually show up as a separate device. Um, so you go into the device and bound the, bind the handbrake. Mine just shows up as a z-axis rotation and in advanced settings if you then scroll down, and you can, this is where you set the um, item as a handbrake, you can see you've again got a dead zone and a saturation here. And you can set this anything from 0 up to 250. So I'm going to set this to around about the 100 mark. Uh, because, as I say, this is me recalibrating everything after I've set things up um, externally. So that gets you going on um, Dirt Rally 2.0. And let's have a look at a couple of other titles that have um, some more 
in-depth options in terms of how you set them up. So the next one we're going to be looking at is Assetto Corsa. Now, within Assetto Corsa, I'm using Content Manager here because it gives me more control over things. So you just head over to Settings, Controls, and on the Main Axes tab, you should then have a handbrake option down the bottom. You just click on the input, pull it back, and here you can set your um, input range from 0 to 100%, so you can effectively apply dead zones in here. Again, you can invert it, don't do that. Um, and as you can see, you've got a test pull on there to show you how well it works as well, which is handy. And uh, we're now going to move away from Assetto Corsa and into um, Beam NG which has actually got some really good setup options within it. So within Beam NG, you go into Options and Controls. Once you're in Controls, you then want to select the Vehicles option, and it's Parking Brake Temporary that you need to use here. Uh, click on Plus to bind something, pull back on it, and you can change things here i would leave the top options away uh, alone sorry you've got an option for inverted axes uh, linearity allows you to change the map and quite nicely you can see that just above in terms of how that actually works i leave this on a one-to-one -one, but if you wanted to more forward weight it to get some more strength in the early pull you can do that you can also set your dead zones in here at the start and the end which is really quite nice um, hit apply and that will then apply it. Um, I, for some reason, often forget to hit the apply button in um, Beam NG, but it's not the nicest interface in the entire world, So, uh, but it's well featured, which is nice. And then I'm just going to use Project Cars 2 um, just to really demo how the vast majority of titles set things up, which is very simple. So over to Options into controls here, edit assignments, and the only thing you can do in here is assign an input to it, which is what I've done on the handbrake here, and uh, you just assign the input, and you can't do anything more than that with it. Um, and no other options around that, around dead zones or anything like that, unfortunately, but it does give you now a handbrake that's far more usable within um, Project Cars 2. So we'll now take a quick look at that. Um, and if you found this video useful, please do hit the like and subscribe button. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the icon, the bell icon uh, to be notified when new content gets uploaded. Thanks very much. Take care.